Hi, my name is Sean Mars, and I'm a senior applications engineer with Hawkridge Systems. And today I want to take you through a special use for the deform tool. So if you're looking at this right now, uh, if you've ever tried to do something like this, where you need to essentially wrap some kind of pattern, uh, whether it's an extrusion or an embossed or debossed cut, um, or just be through all cuts, along a bent pipe like this, then you might have reached for something called the wrap tool. Now, the wrap tool is a great tool, but there's only two types, uh, there's only one general type of shape that can be perfectly wrapped onto. So just in general, um, something called a developable, a developable surface is a cylinder or a cone, essentially, that's something that you can wrap something onto and it won't deform. So once you bend it, well, then you actually have a series of non-cylindrical areas and it might be going in multiple directions. So the standard wrap tool is not going to be able to take care of this, even using that spline option that you might have seen in there. So instead what we can do is essentially wrap this onto a straight section of a pipe and then deform that pipe into the bent version. So let's go ahead and pull it back a little bit here. So let's say you're given this. Now, first thing uh, is we need a sketch, a centerline sketch for this. So that's what the deform tool is going to need in order to bend this. So if it's imported, you might have to get a little fancy with a 3D sketch. Um, you can use things like the point tool and maybe the curve through reference points. Maybe something like that might help you out or just a standard 3D sketch. Either way, you've got to get your sketch in there somehow. Uh, then what you're going to do is measure that sketch. So we want to know how long is this. So we're going to make a straight version of this pipe. So however you want to go about measuring the length of this. Mine's about 44.3 inches, but you want to make it exact, 44.353. And then you're going to make a straight pipe that is that length, 44.353 for me. Uh, and these are going to be two separate bodies. They're not going to be merged together or anything like that. Then from there, you're going to go about making your pattern. So however it is you want to make that, uh, maybe it's just a series of cuts, uh, maybe it's just a linear pattern, something like that. It could be something that's spiraling and wrapping around this. However you can do it. I just have a sketch, and then I use the standard wrap tool, and that's going to use the uh, analytical or developable surface method, which should be a perfect wrap on here. Uh, in this case, I'm embossing it as well. So it ends up as a kind of an extruded wrap here. All right, so from there, what we need to do is we need to tell SolidWorks that we want this shape to be bent up into this shape. So we can just directly use the sketch that's going through the red pipe here. I find that you get the best results from a fit splined sketch. So I'm going to start a 3D sketch, um, just a brand new one, so I can basically make a copy. I'm going to convert the original. So I'm just clicking on the original in my uh, feature tree using convert entities. And then I use a tool called fit spline. So you might not have this on your command manager yet, but this is going to combine all three of these pieces together. I actually should be able to just draw a big old box over this. So I'm going to select everything in that sketch and make sure the closed spline option is turned off because that likes to turn itself on. And what's going to do is connect all of those lines and arcs together as one spline entity. So that's going to help the deform tool to uh, do this. Not strictly necessary, I just find you get better results usually. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I have two, my two sketches, the straight line and the spline. And I'm going to go ahead and run to form, which is also not going to be on your command manager. Uh, the option we're going to use is called curve to curve, because we're going to tell it that this curve is going to go to this curve. So straight line in the blue box, my spline in the pink box, and we shouldn't see a preview quite yet. So what we do also need to tell it is what is the fixed face? So if this thing's going to get bent, what is going to stay in the same place? So I'm just going to grab the end of the pipe here, and then we should start seeing a preview show up. And don't be afraid if it does not look very good yet, a couple things we're going to do. Uh, for this bent pipe method, I find the uniform option and the curve direction option at the bottom give me the best results. And then there's this little slider that's basically the, the accuracy of how, how 
close these two are going to be together. So I just slide that all the way up, and we get a pretty good match. And then if I say OK, um, if you're wondering why I had one pipe being red and one gray, is that after this bend, they should be overlaid in the same location. And when SolidWorks has two things in the same spot, you usually get this kind of mottled back and forth color. And so this actually helps me to verify that there aren't any spots that are like really obviously sticking out, so that they're in pretty much the same location. Now you could use other tools to do this, but this is a very quick way to visually check this. And it really depends on the accuracy that you need uh, to the original. Now, the last thing I would do here is I would actually run what's called the uh, delete keep body tool. So I have multiple bodies in here. One was from the pattern. The other ones were the other one was the original pipe. I'm just going to tell it to keep just the last, the final pipe with the pattern here. Deletes everything else, and that way it keeps extra bodies out of my assembly or wherever. All right, so that's pretty much the method here. It's this curve to curve uh, deform tool option, which uh, I think is oftentimes the most useful one in the deform tool. Now, there's one other situation I want to show you in that you can definitely use cuts in here. So instead of having some kind of pattern that's wrapped around there, this is just a patterned cut along the length of the pipe. Could also be rotating around it, doesn't really matter. Now, one of the things that will happen is sometimes with this deform tool, you'll see that uh, essentially like the center line of the pipe, it won't necessarily be controllable. So as it bends around here, you can see that these cuts kind of skew over to the side. Now that might be fine for my application, it might even be accurate to what I'm trying to do. If I'm trying to avoid that though and have some more control, you, there's actually a more labored process for this. Uh, you can break this operation up into as many sub operations as you want. So what I mean by that is you have your original pipe, I have my original pipe, I'm going to have my straight pipe. All right. I have my pattern on the straight pipe. And then what I'm gonna do is I know that it was uh, right around this section here is where it started to deform over. And so what I'm gonna do is split this at that same location. So remember we can measure along our original sketch, find out how long is it to this edge. I'm gonna split it at that same length. And then I can deform these one at a time. So I can deform one section and then move the straight section up into uh, the correct location. So I'm using the move copy body tool and just using mates. So pretty simple here, just using mates to reconnect it to the right location. And then I'm just gonna run the deform tool again. Now when I do this, you'll see that I'm just using a sketch that represents this length of the straight section. And then I'm deforming it over to the other sketch. So if you want to take a look at that, real quick. So you can see that I'm just using these sec sections of the sketches that I need for this specific deform tool. Otherwise, all the other options are the same. And then you can combine them back together and do your delete key body or what have you. So you can break this up into as many sub sections as you like. If you want to have further control on there, obviously it's going to be more setup and more work, uh, but you can get the uh, the look that you're you're going for here. Alrighty, so that's everything I have for you here in this video. Uh, thank you very much for sticking around. Uh, check out our other videos on our YouTube for all sorts of different instructionals and tutorials and tips and tricks and all that good stuff. Thank you very much for watching and have a great rest of your day.